The president of South Korea has been shot and killed by the head of the Korean CIA. And a state legislator is accused of raping a teenage boy. In sports, the Steelers and Cowboys prepare to do battle. I'm Andrea Wood with Stan Saverin. Newswatch is next. This is TV 53's Newswatch, Pittsburgh's most complete primetime television newscast with Andrea Wood and Stan Saverin. Tonight's news is brought to you by Stop and Go. Good evening. Korean President Park Chung-hee survived two assassination attempts during his 18-year rule, but he could not survive a friendly dinner tonight with the chief of his own CIA. Tonight it was learned that Park and several other people were shot and killed by Kim Jae-kyo following an argument. Prime Minister Cho Kyo-ha was named president at an emergency cabinet meeting. Tonight, South Korea is under martial law, and American troops in South Korea are on combat alert. A state legislator was arrested in Monroeville today and charged with the rape of a 17-year-old boy. Representative David Hayes of Erie County was picked up at the Monroeville Sheridan Inn. He was arraigned on four counts, including corrupting the morals of a minor. Two years ago, Hayes was arrested at Greater Pittsburgh International Airport. He was then charged with illegal possession of marijuana. Convicted State Representative Matthew Chi and Julie wants to tell all before the full house passes judgment on him. Chi and Chuli faces possible expulsion for his conviction on vote fraud charges. Last week, the South Philly Democrat alleged his crimes are no worse than other wrongdoings that have gone, uh, gone unprosecuted. Chi and Chuli claims one of those crimes is vote fraud involving an Allegheny County Democrat. No word yet whether the convicted legislator will get a chance to tell his story. County Coroner Dr. Cyril Wecht owes Allegheny County more than $390,000, according to the results of an investigation by County Controller Jack Lynch. Today, Lynch said Wecht's morgue activities were far in excess of private money-making activities performed by other coroners, but Lynch said his probe also shows former coroner Dr. William Hunt owes Allegheny County over $1,700, while former coroner Ralph Stalder owes $5,500. Wecht and Hunt are candidates for county commissioner. Lynch's probe spanned nine months, and often it was delayed by Wecht's legal maneuvering. Tonight, Wecht denied he owes the county anything, and he accused Lynch of spending $200,000 to falsely prove otherwise. Hunt says he will reimburse the county if a court orders him to. Stalder was unavailable for comment. That strike is over by Teamster delivery men at the Central Blood Bank of Pittsburgh. Today, an agreement was reached on a new three-year wage pact, ending the walkout which began October 15th. The drivers will return to work on Monday. A Westmoreland County man was killed today in a fire that destroyed his one-story house two miles south of Ligonier. The body of 49-year-old Richard Reed was found in a bedroom. Reed owned and operated a clothing store in Ligonier. For the second time, Stanton Story has been convicted of killing an area police officer in 1974, and this time, District Attorney Robert Colville says he'll seek the death penalty. Story's first conviction was overturned in 1975 on the basis of prejudicial evidence. A federal grand jury has indicted Dr. Maya Rosenblum of Pittsburgh on mail fraud charges. Those indictments stem from an alleged scheme to defraud insurance companies through the use of false and inflated medical bills. And the Nuclear Regulatory Commission has cited Metropolitan Edison for serious procedural violations during the Three Mile Island accident last March. The NRC wants to fine Met Ed over $155,000 for 17 items of non-compliance with federal regulations. Meantime, today, a Pitt scientist said that Waterford, Connecticut, the home of a large nuclear plant, is what he calls a dying town. Dr. Ernest Sternglass says his studies show a notable increase in cancer deaths, and the worst is yet to come. The only replay I'd like on Super Bowl 13 is a replay of Super Bowl 13 and not Sunday night's, or Sunday's challenge. Then you can put up a giant screen right to section 660 of Three Rivers. Everybody can watch that one again. <laughs> right. The Steelers won by four in that one. <laughs> now the Steelers are heading into Sunday's game with the Dallas Cowboys with a 
definite air of confidence, and it may be a bit unwarranted. Granted, they have won three straight games against the Cowboys, including the two Super Bowl wins. With well, the jury still out on the condition of J.T. Thomas as to his availability on Sunday, and given his unfamiliarity with the safety position, the Steelers' secondary seems to be a bit shaky. But then again, the Cowboys' secondary has not been stellar this season either. So perhaps we'll see the football in the air plenty when Terry Bradshaw meets up with Roger Staubach. The Pitt Panthers will provide the attraction the first half of a big local, college, uh, local football doubleheader this weekend. The Panthers, seeking to strengthen their bowl position, host undefeated Navy tomorrow afternoon at Pitt Stadium. The remaining tickets will go on sale tomorrow morning at 8.30 at Gate 1 at Pitt Stadium. Injuries have forced Dave Bucklew and Glenn Meyer out of the Navy game for Pitt. The Penguins limping home from an unsuccessful road trip open a five-game homestand beginning tomorrow night as the Philadelphia Flyers visit the Civic Arena. The Pens, losers of three straight, will host the Flyers, Bruins, Canadiens, Rockies, and Flames before they hit the road again. In the National Hockey League tonight, first of all, the New York Islanders scored twice in the third period and came on to beat the Hartford Whalers 2-1. to one. Atlanta leads Edmonton 7-2 to two in the third period. No score in from Winnipeg in the Boston Bruin game. And in the second period, Colorado leads the Toronto Maple Leafs 1 to nothing. The Golden Jet is coming back to the NHL. Bobby Hull has decided to end his retirement, and he will rejoin the Winnipeg Jets next week. Hull, who is 40 years old, has not played in more than a year. Now, this should come as no surprise to you. United Press International is named Baltimore pilot Earl Weaver as the American League Manager of the Year. Weaver's Orioles expected to finish no better than fourth in the American League East, ended up with the best record in all of Major League Baseball this year. In the NBA tonight, first of all, no score in from New Jersey. Broken down, the ticker must have fallen a swamp. Philadelphia remained undefeated. They beat the New York Knicks 127-116. to 116. In the fourth quarter, San Antonio leads Detroit 88-85. No score in from Washington and Indiana. And that's it for sports. Thank you, Stan. I must uh, tell you and tell everyone else that tonight is uh, my last night here on Newswatch. I'll be going to... WYTV, Channel 33 in Youngstown, Ohio, where I began my career, so that means that I'm no further ahead than I was. <laughs> just a little bit west. That's just, just a little bit west. So uh, I thank you for all the fun times we've had in there. Good luck. Talking sports, thank you. In other news tonight, Pittsburgh police today recovered $30,000 worth of appliances and other items that had been stolen from a Sears warehouse in Lawrenceville. The merchandise was found in a van in the Homewood area when police arrived. Three suspects fled and remain at large tonight. It looks like many Pittsburghers wish they could flee to warmer climates. Tonight, the National Weather Service is calling for freezing temperatures. Tomorrow, it will be fair and cold with our high near 50. Our low tonight may hit 22 in the suburbs. Finally tonight, insurance companies must pay sickness claims to an insured who becomes ill after taking out a policy, even if the disease predates coverage. That ruling came today from a Pennsylvania Superior Court and it overturned a Luzerne County Court order which denied benefits to a man who fell ill five months after taking out an insurance policy. Once again, thanks, Pittsburgh, for everything. Next week, I'll be doing the Good Day Pittsburgh show at 9.30 in the morning, so I have a chance to say goodbye again then. That's Newswatch for Stan Severn. I'm Andrea Wood. Good night. This has been TV 53's Newswatch. Pittsburgh's most complete primetime television newscast with Andrea Wood and Stan Sabrin. Tonight's news has been brought to you by Stop and Go, 